And now it is a story of adventure, war, and the search for the perfect cup of coffee. Jeffrey Brown sat down with author Dave Eggers to talk about The Monk of Mocha, the latest addition to the NewsHour bookshelf. It begins with a statue in San Francisco of a man in a turban drinking from a cup, an image many of us know as the logo for Hills Brothers Coffee. For Mokhtar Alkanshali, it marked the beginning of quite a journey, from wayward San Francisco youth to his family homeland of Yemen, caught up in a civil war, to successful coffee importer and businessman, with many stops along the way. His story is told in the new book, The Monk of Mocha, by author Dave Eggers. And he and Mokhtar Alkanshali join us now. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. You know, um, it's interesting to take a daily commodity, coffee, something that we're all very familiar with, and sort of defamiliarize it. You're, yeah. you're, you're explaining in this book where it comes from, how it's made, uh, the way it's spread throughout the world. You, you, you enjoy that, I can see, writing about it. Well, I like to start from scratch. I had my first cup of coffee when I was 35. Uh -huh. I had no interest in it, its history. or I didn't know anything about it. I don't know where it came from. I didn't know it was a fruit. Yeah. until three years ago. So I was able to sort of follow Mokhtar's discovery of coffee, the history of it, which is really unbelievable and so many fantastical stories of adventure and daring do and thievery and and then it has a very dark history too involving a lot of slavery and you know the people that pick and and grow coffee have been exploited for centuries but the recent history of it has such potential to change lives in countries like Yemen by empowering the farmers, um, giving them more control over their crop, and and bringing coffee to like the same state that we take, that we have for wine. You know, mm -hmm. the varietals matter, the farmers matter, the uh, the soil matters, and if we give credit to it and really care about where it comes from, we can uplift these farmers who create this incredible beverage. The, the farmers in this story are in Yemen, and you're going back to a, a, a family homeland, right? But, but one in great turmoil. Now, Americans typically see, I mean, on this news program, we talk about Yemen. It's always about terror, war. What, did, what, what, what image did you want to present? One of my goals in, in life was to try to teach people and educate them about what Yemen is. And you're right. Most people, when asked about Yemen, all they, can, all they know is what they see in the news headlines. And those are oftentimes very negative things. But it's really a wonderful and beautiful country with such a rich history and heritage. And it's the reason why we have coffee. There is a city in Yemen called Mocha, mm -hmm. first port for coffee. Um, and coffee fueled Yom's enlightenment. And in coffee houses in Vienna and Paris and London, people had incredible intellectual thoughts. And now coffee is such a huge thing. And, you know, I always tell people that, that oil powers factories and machines and coffee powers humans and dreams. Mm -hmm. but, but you did uh, go through quite a bit in your experience in Yemen, including civil war, getting uh, captured by some of the participants there? I did. Um, Yemen is going through a really horrific civil war that's been going on for over three years now. And it's the single worst humanitarian crisis in the world. And everything that we consume comes from somewhere. And Yemen's reality is a very difficult political reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did have to go through quite a bit to do that journey, and I'm very thankful for where I am today. Mm -hmm. th th this is not for you the, the, the first time you've written about um, a particularly American story, but through a foreign lens, right? Or, or with another land kind of looking in. Is there, a, is there a kind of political mission to this and other stories? Well, I, I am interested in the American dream, I think it's always alive and it's always under threat. And I think that it's best illustrated through the eyes of one person who embodies it and who lives it. I think immigrants dream the American dream a lot harder, a lot better than anybody else. The sons of daughters of immigrants dream it better and harder than anybody else and embody it perfectly. So I'm interested in those stories. And then I'm also interested in when we're our best as a nation. When we embrace people from around the world, we take them in, we care for them, we lift them up. And I'm interested in times when we fall short. And in the case of thousands of Yemeni Americans that were left uh, to their own devices when the Civil War began, the U.S. provided no help getting any of these Americans out of the country. 
I think we could have done a lot better. I think we owe a responsibility to take, take care of our own people in times of turmoil when they're stuck abroad. And I think that we should learn something from that. Where, 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 are, you, where are you now? Where's the, how's the coffee business and what do you see coming from all this experience? For me, I think coffee is an incredible thing that crosses borders and cultures and political hardships to find its way to our cup. And I hope that when people look at coffee, they know that they have so much more power as consumers, that they have the power to uplift someone. In my case in Yemen, my work is one of the few ways that people get uh, relief into Yemen and money to these farmers who need that support. And uh, I believe that my work will outlast these bombs. And when the Zwar does end, that I, I hopefully had laid a good foundation to continue doing this work and helping farmers and bridging this gap between these two worlds and how we think coffee is an incredible bridge for us. All right. Well, that's a lot to take in with your morning coffee, but it's a wonderful story. Mokhtar al Kanshali, Dave Eggers. The new book is The Monk of Mocha. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you so much for having us.